Hello ladies and gentlemen, my name is Shadowwraith and today I'm going to be going over how to use Tabletop Simulator. So if you've seen any of my battle reports on Tabletop Simulator or like some of the army reviews I do on Tabletop Simulator, I thought it'd just be quick. Uh, and how to get Tabletop Simulator, how to get the models um, and how to play on it. So the first thing you want to do obviously is to go on the store and search Tabletop Simulator. There you go, it's $14.99 boom. Okay. All right, easy peasy. Now, when you've installed it, and all, oops, now you've installed it and stuff like that, you're gonna go to your library, okay? Find Tabletop Simulator, I've got it in my favorites because I use it a lot. Okay, and there we go, we've got it. Click play, all that good stuff. Now, how do you get models? Well, that's the easy bit, and that's why Tabletop Simulator is such a cool, um, like, game, because you go over on the workshop, so I'm in the library, on the page in the library, click on workshop, okay? Give it a second. It is like two in the morning, so if I sound a bit tired, it's because I've been at work all day. Now, no idea what that is. That's terrifying. But we're just going to search whatever we want. So, Middle Earth, uh, I'll do M E S B G. Search. And you get all sorts of stuff. So, maps. There's a map. That's kind of cool. Defensive Edoras. You know what? I'm going to save it. Alright. And you see what I did there? I clicked on the little plus. That means I'm going to add it to my game, so I'm going to have that one, that is mental, I'm never going to play on that. Um, yeah, there you go, but you can search for like specific models, so like MESBG, Evil, there is some really good ones uh, where you can get full armies. Anyway, if you join my Discord, they're all in there, they're all about, there's a middle earth strategy battle game, like tabletop simulator, Discord server as well, which is really good. Um, but yeah, you can search whatever you want, and it's probably on here. Um, I've got all the Middle Earth models. So, cool. We've done that. That's how you find your models. Okay. Azog. You never know. He might come up. <laughs> there you go. Middle Earth strategy battle game. Armies of the Hobbit. You get the scenario there. Boom. Just hit on that plus, and it's in the game. So, I booted up the game, and this is the first thing you'll see. This is like the start menu. So if your friend's hosting a game and you want to join it obviously you click join and like well that's a game I just had you search for the name that's how you what name you get to name your thing I'll go over that in a minute and then some of them require a password so there you go or you can just join some randoms game so um, hide locked let's see I can just join whatever I want here um, I can even search just M E S B G like I don't recommend joining some random person's game but you can if you want, if that floats your boat. If you want to host a server or play on your own or whatever, or have a look at models, here's how you do it. So you go and create multiplayer if you want to play with someone else, okay? So it'll be the server name, so yeah, like it says there, I'll, I'll do M-E-S-B-G, so that's what they'd search to find it. You do it public friends invite, server password, one, two, three, four, or I don't know. Shadow. There you go. So when they go and join, they'll search MESBG, it'll pop up, they'll click on it, ask for a password, they type in Shadow, and they'll get in. You can put how many players you want in the server. I usually have them four because we usually have spectators. But that's it. I'm not going to go online. I'm going to go on single player. There we go. Cool. So you'll be greeted with this. Um, remember those things you added? So you hit on the plus sign? Well, to find them, you go in the workshop because you know that's where we got all the stuff from, and it will all be here, so you can search it here. All right, but I'm going to get a model. Say I'm going to play, I don't know, Azog's Legion. So I'm going to look for it, and I've got. I know it's called Hobbit Evil Armies, so I'm going to type in Evil and Lord of the Rings Evil Hobbit Evil. So I'm going to click on that and load it up. Okay, bear with it; it does take a while sometimes. Um, there we go. Boom. Can we get past that sentence? Then? No? Sweet, whatever. Um, and there we have it. So it's got all the models here. Some lovely people like scanned their models so we could play with it on here. And it's all completely free, like all these extra bits. You don't have to pay for them once you bought the game. Um, and there we go, cool. I'm going to get Bolg mounted. You know, just what you need for the to actually play a game of Lord of the Rings. So him mounted, unmounted. Um, and I'm just going to take, I don't know. A couple of days. I don't need loads of stuff. Okay, there we go. Look at that. Boom. Cool. And screw it. We'll have a troll. Side troll. There we go. Cool. Happy days. Now, are these captains? No, they're not. So, I'm just going to make a random list. This is no point limit whatsoever. 
So I'm just gonna do it. Don't worry, I'll go over the controls properly in a minute. But boom, boom, boom. There you go. That's my absolutely terrible list. So to save a list, you can copy and paste by. By the way, you can either drag a box over, so you click and drag, and it'll highlight all the models, and then you can hit hover over one and Control C, Control V, and it'll copy and paste it. That's how I did that. Okay. But to save them, so you can bring them into games with like online people, you do exact thing, drag and select all of them, hover over one of the models that is highlighted, right click, okay, then you will look for save object, so save object, and then you can set name it, name it whatever you want, just leave it in root folder, uh, I'm going to call it, I don't know, uh, demo list, there you go, save, cool, alright, and here we are, we've joined a game or made a game or whatever, basically to load a map it's exactly the same, um, so you can go workshop, if you want to get that menu whilst you're in a game you just click on games and then you click on workshop and it will come up with everything you think, so like maps, there you go, I've just loaded that one, it's not the best one because I don't like this grey space but I don't know, the view is rather nice so I like it, and I don't know what this white line's for, but who knows, maybe that's 6x4 and that's 4x4, cool. Now, I need my models, so what I'm going to do is go into Objects, Saved Objects, because that's what we did, and then you can just search the name or scroll down, Demo, there you go, Demo List. Click it once, don't like triple click it, because you'll just spawn like a million, and then you'll get a ghost-like form of them, and then wherever you click is where they'll spawn. If they take a moment to spawn after a click, don't click like eight times, otherwise you will spawn eight, like eight times of them. But there we go, that's my little Demo List. Right ho! How do you actually play on Tabletop Simulator? Alright, we'll start with the Billy Basics, okay? Like Billy Billy Basics. So, obviously, you got your mouse, okay? Now, if I want to measure, I'm going to hold down Tab, and then it will turn into that little measuring, like the ruler icon. So, hold down Tab, and then I'm just going to pull it across, and it will measure from that point. And I've got it set to inches. Sometimes it will come as centimeters. If you want to change that, you come here. And you just click that, centimeters, grid, inches. There you go. It'll be on inches. So, that's pretty cool. That's how I know how to measure out my deployment zone. If you want to change the camera angle, you right click and drag around and it'll change the camera angle. WASD to move around the map like that. But yeah. Um, so, I'm going to measure, I don't know, 12 inches on. So, I know 12 inches is up to there. Cool. And fun fact, if you've got tab held down, if you click, you'll get a little, arrow, a little arrow up here. It will appear for like 10 seconds or something and then disappear. And then drag, click, select, and move my guys into position. Right, if you've got them all clicked, like uh, selected like this, you can click them so they're like slightly hovering. You can move them around. And Q and E will rotate. So I want them to face the right way. So I'm going to hit Q. They're going to rotate around. Boom, there you go. And it's quite handy. You can just click loads and then move them all together and stuff like that. Oops, if that ever happens, don't let go. Just hit escape and it'll return them to the point where you picked them up from. Okay, so that's measuring free. So freely off points. Now, the cool thing about this is tabletop simulator. So I'm just going to pop this guy here to look at Bulg. I want Bulg to charge him. I know Bulg can move 8 inches. But am I in range? So I'm going to hover over Bulg. I'm going to hit tab, and it will measure from the closest point of his base to the direction I'm going for. If I hover it, and it comes in contact with another model, it will snap to closest point of his base to closest point of the other base. So I know that's 4.6 inches away, which means it's a legal charge. Okay, that's pretty cool. So that's how you measure. You can measure shooting. So I don't know. Imagine this guy's got a bow, and I want to see if I'll, this guy's got a bow here. I want to see if I can shoot this dude. So I'm just going to hover over him, hit tab, pull it across, 15 inches, boom, cool, I've got an 18 inch bow, I can shoot him. Happy days, yeah? Easy peasy, right? Yeah. All right. <laughs> One more thing I'm measuring that I want to mention is you can measure as you move. So if I want to move this guy separately, I don't want to move him as a block, you click him, hold on to the click, don't let him go, and then like even if you move them slightly it'll still measure from the original point but you hit tab so you're holding down the click and holding tab at the same time and you drag it across okay and that's there you go six inches boom that's how far it can move 
hit escape, he can return to his original position. Thing is, the cool thing is, if I click him up and then start moving, I'm going to go, oh no, it's too late. I forgot where he is. As long as you haven't let go, you just hit tab and it'll go from the original point where he was. So that's quite cool. There you go. And if you want to snap him back, just hit escape. Oh, I mean, don't let go of him. <laughs> and then he'll go back to where he was. There you go. That's easy. You can do it as a unit as well. So if I want to move all of these, just to save time, which you might want to sometimes on TTS, especially if you're running like Goblin Town or something like that. Yeah, there you go. Boom, done. Easy peasy. That is measurement down. I'm, you're all measurement pros. Okay, happy days. Okay, so the next thing I want to tell you uh, about is manipulating models. So moving them about and stuff. So extra little tips and tricks on that. So obviously, if you click on them and move them, they're going to follow wherever you're dragging them across. If you want to measure it, you can measure it by hit hold and tab, like I said. The other thing is, if you're like me and you like a thematic thing, if I if Bog charges this dude like that, there you go, he's in range. That just looks a bit naff, and you want them to face each other. If you click on Bog and hold Q, he'll rotate, or Q or E, so just go either direction you're uh, like clicking, and he's gonna rotate. There you go. Look at that. They're looking at each other now. Very angry. I don't like his chances, but yeah, that's quite a fun little thing. The other thing you'll find with this game is if I'm moving here, if I clip into a piece of terrain, he will hover above it, right? Which is not great if you're trying to go through a doorway. Sometimes, maybe I've got the wrong angle there. If I go, oh wow, this doorway actually lets him pass. So this piece of terrain isn't actually there. It's got no hitbox. So bad example. But what about that one? Is that one? Oh, uh, this one kind of has a hitbox. Not really. Anyway, if you don't want him to rise, so say you want him to go on that sleeping mat, I'll see if it's even possible. Wee, sorry about that. Okay, I want him to go under that tent, but it's not letting me. If you hold, if you click him, hold it, and then right click at the same time, it will pin him to the floor, so he can go under. Because usually it'll take him above it, won't it? Which is a bit annoying. But you don't want that. You want him going. So hold down right click, hold down left click. So. Left click first, hold it, right click, then move. There you go. Pins him down. Happy days. Cool. The other thing which is quite useful for Middle Earth with manipulating models is getting knocked prone. So, get rid of him. <laughs> He's charged his Uruk. I've won the dual uh, roll and he gets knocked prone. The best way to represent this is not tokens or anything like that, but if you just hover over them and hit F, he'll flip over. There you go. Very cool, okay? He is prone. And of course, if you want him over again, you just hover over him, hit F again, he'll flip back over. Works for every model. I mean, you'll never be prone as a cavalry model, but you never know. Poor troll. There you go. Sweet. So, that's manipulating models. That's pretty easy, yeah? I mean, if you want things to go in base contact, you just do that. Right, the other thing with manipulating models is, let's say, I don't know, get rid of these boys. I've got just spearmen, okay? But they're all a bit jumbled around all over the place. Like, oh no, I, I want to set these guys up quickly. What you do is make sure you've got an area to select them all in a box. So I'm gonna select them all, okay? Once they're all highlighted, click on one of them to pick them up, hold it, and then if I press a number, that's how many ranks they'll be in. So one will put them in one rank, two will put them in two, three, four, five, so on. It, they can't go above five. Or above four, should I say? Uh, no, above five. There you go. So I'm gonna have them two ranks, so I know that they're spear sporting. When you're playing on TTS, you have to give a little bit of leeway for base contact. Just make it clear this guy is in base contact because you know it's quite hard to see. Sometimes quite hard to get them into base contact. But there you go. They're definitely in base contact. I think. Boom. Easy, easy peasy. But unfortunately, they got sources blast, so they're all not prone. There you go. Right, so you all know how to measure, you all know how to move your models and manipulate them, okay? Pretty easy, yeah? It's easy once you get told. All this stuff, like, you can ignore most of it. Like, you don't need to know all of it to play. Um, at the end of the video, I'll do, like a, a, like, a little advanced thing where you get extra bonus things that you can do, which are quite useful, but they're not, like, a must-know. But you're probably thinking, hey, Shadow Wraith, we need to roll some dice. How do we do that? Well, it's the same way. Um, some maps come with dice, but I save my dice. Okay, so you can go into, you can search them in the workshop like I showed you how to get your models and then save them. I've got like a bunch of dice 
Uh, my favourite dice are usually my Skaven dice, because I have them in real life. And you just spawn them in. Boom! There you go. I've got my dice. Right? There are many ways to roll these dice. Okay? One way is to highlight them. So if I want to roll one dice, it's up to you. You can have a highlight in the box, which is what I do, or you can hover over it without highlighting it. I'm going to um, highlight it because I don't need to hover over it. I can just roll it. To roll it, just hit R. I like to double tap R to get a good roll, um, but it's up to you. So that's a double R just to get a nice good roll. Boom, six. What a good roll. If you just one tap it, sometimes it doesn't roll very well. I mean, it's rolling perfectly for me now, but yeah, that was a bit of a spin on one number. If you double tap it or triple tap it, you do it. There you go. It works if you want to roll multiple dice. So if I want to roll four dice, I highlight all of them in that box. There you go. Triple tap R, whatever. Boom, that's what I rolled. And if you hover over it, it'll tell you what you've rolled as well. If you're too blind, but just zoom in. It's not hard to see. There we go. Rolling dice. They're your two main ways. Okay. Um, like, you can roll dice like this. I don't really like it. Because they tend to go everywhere, knock things over. And sometimes they don't even roll properly. Is you can highlight them all, click on them, give them a good old shake, and then throw them like that. But I think that looks janky. It's up to you, like, no judgement if you roll them like that, but hey ho, it's up to you. Boom. They seem to roll six as well. If this is a six, that's balked. No, one more chance. Go and get a six. Nah, it's fine. So, that's another way. The last way to roll dice is you can get little dice portals or dice boxes. So, I've got some saved. Um, so, there's a dice roller. This is better for like 40k or like mass dice. So, if I had this many shots, not that I would in Lord of the Rings, unless I'm playing like Lake Town or something. You can just hover them over the box, they should drop in, and then they get organised for you. And then you can just go, oh, I'm hitting on, I don't know, fives. And you can just delete everything that's not a five. Get out of here. There you go, wounded on sixes. Yep, killed one dude. Happy days. Easy peasy, yeah? Cool. Yeah, that's if you're going to roll loads of dice. But Lord of the Rings, you should be alright. Happy days. Um next okay we're gonna get into the more advanced things so you know the basics how to play the game you can measure you can move you can roll dice it's not that bad and obviously if you need to remove casualties you move them like that changing the camera angle you just right click drag it around scroll in scroll out WASD to move around there you go so you can get bird's eye view or if you need a line of sight view what can bulk see well you can see into that passageway so yeah it's pretty cool but now we're going to the slightly more advanced things. So, the biggest thing that I like, and it works with most models, but not all the models. So, I don't know if it works with bulk, we're going to find out. You should have a little number pad to the right of your keyboard. Okay, so not numbers along the top, numbers to the right of your keyboard. If you hover over that model and hit 1, to, it doesn't work on bulk, of course it doesn't. Oh my days, it doesn't work on any of them. Uh, <laughs> try again. Okay, so... If you hover over your warrior and hit the number, okay, that's number one, and it'll tell you that's a one inch circle. It'll put, so I know that guy's control zone. Like, there's no measurement, there's no, like, if he's on that line, he's within one inch within his control zone. Okay, that's pretty handy. Two, so you have to click it twice because the first one gets rid of it. It's two inches, three inches is three, four is six inches. So that's good for like King uh, King Alasar's banner and stuff like that. The Serpent Lord. Five, eight inches. And then you've got six, which is 12 inches. Look at that. That's Prince Imrahil stuff right there. And that means you don't really need to measure. You don't need to leave it up. But if we're in the thick of battle and there's like crazy stuff going on. And I don't know if that dude gets a banner. I can be like, well, I've got a 12 inch banner because I'm Imrahil. Yeah, he's in. Or I've got a six inch banner because he's not as good. Uh that's not six there you go six inches oh no he's out okay you can just measure but <clears throat> that's quite handy I use it for like the shade aura for Angmar and stuff like that so that's pretty cool okay uh, another tip right so you get some abilities where I don't know say you've got this dude and you've got multiple like cavalry charging or something like that so say this guy is a cavalry model or this guy gets plus one to wound if he's charged imagine he's a um, knight of uh, Dale yeah 
So he's just been charged. But his friend next to him didn't get charged. I actually charged the elf. It might get confusing later on who gets plus one to wound. So what I can do is right click on him. Color tint. Any color you want. And it'll change his color. And I know he gets plus one to wound. That's pretty cool. And pretty helpful. We want to set him back, you just put it to white and it'll go back to normal. The other thing you can do, so say this guy, super special, and I had a spare for one point in my list, and I didn't want to give anyone shields because I'm a madman. I can right click on him, go down to the bottom where it says his name, click on it, spearman with axe, and then hit enter. Boom. And if I hover over him, it's really easy to see what he's got. Spearman with axe. Because you won't get all WYSIWYG models in this game. So you can just label him, and that's as good as WYSIWYG pretty much. The final thing I'm going to show you is really good. So we, there's a lot of tracking involved, so keep it in a uh, tally of like Might, Will and Fate, things like that in Lord of the Rings, or any other game, there's always like command points or whatever. So in this bottom right of your screen here, you've got a little edit note. If you click on that, I don't know if you can see it, but there's a little like imaginary box. If you click on that imaginary box you'll get a little cursor thing. And you can do, say, Bulg. And he has got, I don't know, three might, three will, three fate. There you go. And then you can go. So yeah, there we go. That's pretty much it. Um, the last thing, which you might find extremely, this is probably the most important thing, and it doesn't work on all tables. You have to have the right table to do this absolute MLG like pro player move. But if you click on this little thing up here and you're losing the game, suddenly you're not really losing the game. <laughs> it flips the table. It doesn't do it too well on this. Oh, there we go. See you later, table. I didn't lose because there's no game. There you go. Some things are like stuck in now. Just click on them and it'll chin them off. Get out of here. There you go. And my little message. Oh, look at that. That's Oh, wow. I don't like looking in there. That upset my brain. Um, yeah, there we go. That's a quick rundown of how to play Tabletop Simulator. So, um, make sure you like the video, if you thought it was useful. And jump on my Discord server, because there's plenty of people playing on there. Um, so yeah, you can even challenge me to a game if you want. Hey ho. But, that's it. If you're feeling especially saintly today, do consider subscribing. But even if you don't do any of those things, I still hope you have an absolutely fantastic day. And I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.